It's time once again to step out, step up, and step into the Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clemens. Rick's expertise in the coming out process has helped hundreds of men and women step out of the closet to live authentically as gays and lesbians. Freeing you from the feelings of guilt and shame, Rick's heart-centered approach is loaded with bankable advice and take action tips for living powerfully on the other side of the closet door. Each week, the Coming Out Lounge brings you heartwarming coming out stories, thought-provoking insights, and diverse perspectives for living out and proud. Pull up a chair and spend an inspiring hour in the Coming Out Lounge. Stepping out, stepping up, and stepping into living your truth. Here's the host of your show, Coming Out Coach, Rick Clemens. And whether it's a jail cell, maybe you're trapped in a room, maybe even you're trapped in your own thoughts about who you're supposed to be. No matter how this presents yourself, we always find ourselves at some point in time in our lives trapped somewhere that we just don't feel comfortable. And this is really, truly common in our gay and lesbian society, but there's also a piece of this that comes rushing forward when you're part of our transgender world as well. And today on the Coming Out Lounge, we're going to go deeper into what does it really, truly feel like to be trapped Trapped into some place that you truly cannot even fathom how you will ever step forward from the feelings you're having. I'm coming out, Coach Rick Clemens, and welcome to the Coming Out Lounge. We are in week two, marching towards National Coming Out Day. And in this series, I am celebrating people and ideas that truly help us as gay, lesbians, transgenders, step out, step up, and step into living our truth in ways that most people would go, I can't believe they actually have the capacity and the ability to do this. And today I'm really, truly excited about having a guest on the show that epitomizes what it means to be trapped inside yourself, trapped into some thoughts, beliefs, and wondering how can I ever step forward. And during this hour, I would really encourage everyone who has never dealt with the subject of being transgender to allow themselves to step into a space and put themselves into the hearts and minds of someone who is struggling in this world, because this is big decisions. These are the big things that really, truly challenge us to think outside of our own boxes. And as we go through the show today... If you feel compelled, again, I always invite you to tweet out about this show and share it with those that you think might benefit from it. My tweet handle is at Rick Clemens, and my hashtags are pound coming out lounge and pound co lounge. So I'm going to go ahead and bring our guest on here in just a couple of minutes, and I want to tell you a little bit about him. I ran into him through another radio show host who introduced me to Ryan. And just in the time that I've gotten to know Ryan and read about him, and I've been reading his book, which we'll talk about, I've realized the deepest level of respect and honoring and understanding of a human being closer than anything I've ever felt in a long time and really getting what it must be like. So without any further ado, I'd like to bring this powerful transgender man forward and introduce you to what I'm considering a good friend of mine at this stage, Ryan Salins. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Rick? I'm doing really well. I'm, you know, I've been looking forward to this show for many, many months, ever since um, Ali LaPreet connected us. And I know you were just recently on her radio show at This Little Parent. But you've been a busy guy, especially this past weekend. You were at a conference and your book has launched. It's been how many months now since the book Second Son came out? It came out in April, so a little over six months now. Wow. So obviously on the big trail of getting a book launch, going out and doing a lot of book parties and signings and things such as that, as well as the advocacy work that you do. So let's get right to it. You are a female to male transgender man, correct? Yes, I am. Yeah. And that journey began for you how long ago? Well, the actual physical journey of transitioning began back in 2004. 
but I always say this journey began since my earliest memories of uh, about age two and a half when I realized that my parents, my family told me that I was a little girl didn't really fit with how I saw myself. <laughs> right. And that makes sense. And, you know, as I've read your book and I, I love the book, the book is fabulous for anyone who is either going through this journey, whether you're female to male or male to female, or you're one of these people who sits on the sideline going, I don't really understand this. I can tell you from reading the book, all you have to do is read the book and your heart will open. Your understanding of what someone like Ryan has gone through will begin to really become crystal clear and it's told in such a beautiful way, Ryan. You you take it and you make it real. And you and I talked about this a couple of days ago when we had our pre-show conversation. But you're a great storyteller, so I just want to make sure that people realize this is a story. It is a it really a memoir, is what it is. Correct? Yes. Yep. Yes. Second from the memoir. Yeah, it, it really comes from that perspective. So I told Ryan when I was going to have him on the show, I didn't want to do a lot of the normal route stuff, but I think for queuing up the rest of the show and getting it teed up some of the normal questions need to be asked. So you already brought up, you felt this from a very young age of two, two and a half. And describe briefly what that feeling was. What did it, is it that you knew at a very young age that you needed to do for your life? Well, for me, at that young of an age, it was a very uh, simple thing. Of, in the country where I lived growing up in Nebraska, we had a pool in our backyard. And I remember being outside with my family and seeing my brother and my dad in their swimming trunks, my mom and my sister in their swimming suits, and I had a little two-piece bathing suit on, and I remember taking the top part off. I never wanted to wear that top part because I uh, saw myself as being like my dad and my brother. I didn't see myself represented in what I viewed in my sister and my mom. And I think that's really part of the key is... It does start internally, but even the outward representation of who you saw yourself as just wasn't manifesting. It wasn't there physically for you. Right. Correct. Yeah. And that's a big piece. And I think a lot of times those of us outside of this world and, you know, I'm going to put myself a little bit there because I just came out of the closet myself back in 2000 as a gay man. So being introduced to the transgender world and everything has been part of my own journey over the last 12 years. But I think there is this piece of understanding that it is the external as well as the internal. And those two things are dynamically different yet uniquely connected at the core of who you are. Would that be a pretty correct assumption? Yeah, there's no way we can be a whole human being without being able to connect both our internal emotions and feelings with our uh, physical being. There's just no way to do it. Uh, when people are going in for surgeries, I always say that you first need to be emotionally comfortable in a place where you can be really emotionally stable because surgeries aren't going to fix things. Surgeries will help, but you have to be secure in who you are inside well, first. I think that's a very, very big point for anyone that's going on any kind of journey. And coming from a gay man perspective, I would say the same thing exists. If I truly wasn't who I was internally as a gay man, it didn't really matter who I was externally and being in the community. I have to come to a certain level, and I say have to because I rarely use those terms because I don't think there's a lot of have-tos in lives, but I think in the best interest of anyone who is on these kind of journeys, to be completely aligned in self from the inside out is what will make us highly successful in the life that we are destined to lead. And I think yes. what you shared is so critical that, especially where there's going to be a physical transformation as well, that I would guess in your community, and I'm not saying that the transgender community is separate from gay and lesbian, but it is. There's a different, there's a lesbian community, there's a gay community, there's a transgender community. We're all within it as one, but we're each separate communities. But I would assume that there's a lot of strife in the community if you're not interconnected to self before you go through these transitions. Yeah, 
There is. Um, and I think that that's one of the reasons why with the speaking that I do and with my story uh, in my book, it's so appealing to any audience just because this is a lesson that any of us uh, can learn and can go through. You know, really doing that self-discovery and honoring who you are over any of your fears of what other people are going to think about you. Right. And we've got about two minutes till we go to break, Ryan, but I think this is a big piece that I drew from your book. It is the honoring who you are. So in the couple of minutes before we go to break, what would be one of the things you would share with anyone, whether you're transgender, gay, lesbian, straight, whatever? What is one of the tricks you use to really honor who you are? And I'd say trick, I don't really mean that, but tools you use to really honor who you are. Um, I always say really looking at the things that scare you the most and not running away from those is one of the ways to honor yourself because there's a lot to be said in that fear. There's a lot of truth behind that fear. And typically it's our adult filters or our, uh, our fear of what people are going to think about us that keeps us from moving forward. Absolutely. And I, I, this is what I like about how you bring some of this forward in the book. And sometimes it's very subtle how it gets delivered, but in the book, I saw that message clearly numerous times, uh, whether it was the fear you had of, you know, the girlfriend you were involved with at the time this was happening or the fear of who am I? And we'll talk about some of the addictions and stuff that you went through. But in the last minute we have before break, I think really this truth is in the fear. And I would assume that you face that fear numerous times throughout this journey. Yeah, and you know, I'm still facing fears. That's one of the other things I've learned about life is that we are always going to come against, up against those challenges and those yep. transitions that bring about a change that can be very uncomfortable at times and scary, but we, that makes us a better human being. Absolutely. And with that, we're going to be going to break here. And I just want everyone to hear what Ryan just said. In the fear is when we become the better human being. So we'll be right back with the Coming Out Lounge in just a few seconds. And step out, step up, and step into always facing those fears on a regular basis. We'll be right back. You've been listening to the Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Have you been laid off, fired, downsized, right-sized, or re-engineered out of a job? Are you unemployed or anticipate that possibility? Then tune in for Successfully Unemployed, hosted by Alan Sherwood, MBA, president of Sherwood Consulting Service. Successfully Unemployed will provide you a hope-filled and comprehensive approach to the job search process from an author who's experienced it all. Alan and his guests will cover all dimensions of a job search, physical tasks, mental attitude, emotional health, even one spiritual perspective. All must be integrated in order for a person to be successfully unemployed so they can then be successfully employed. This show is designed to help you move forward from job loss to finding or creating more fulfilling work. For more on Alan Sherwood, MBA, and the show, check out his website, SuccessfullyUnemployed.com. Then join us for Successfully Unemployed with Alan Sherwood, MBA. Thursday night at 8, 7 Central here on Toginet.com. Get ready to laugh along with This Little Parent Stayed Home with Ali Lopreet. Friday evenings at 6, 5 Central on Toginet.com. This is a truly realistic, no-nonsense, tell-it-like-it-is method that will have you laughing and crying, surviving while struggling, and hammering away at the hardships as you travel through the greatest journey of your life. Get empowered by joining thousands of other parents who have also decided to take a leap of faith into a double career with longer hours and half the pay simply because of the love they have for their children. Together, we are rebuilding a new economy that will support us rather than enslave us. Never again will we have to choose between raising our children and earning to provide for them. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. For more on Allie and her success, check out her website, OurMilkMoney.com. So come get empowered with This Little Parent Stayed Home with Allie Lopreet. Friday afternoons at 6, 5 Central on Toginet.com. Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. 
And once again, we are celebrating our march towards October 11th, which is National Coming Out Day. And part of this series that we're in during week two is bringing forth people who really epitomize the coming out story, whether you're gay, lesbian, transgender, doesn't really matter to me. What I'm here for is to really show many different facets of this coming out story. And with Ryan Salins, my guest today, um, as a female to male transgender, I love this piece that he's bringing forward. And one of the profound things that Ryan said right before we went to break was, there is a lot of truth in the fear when we stand in the fear of where we're going. And I love that, Ryan. That is probably some of the best, best advice any guest has said so far on this show is how we, and we stand in that fear, we really see our truth. And right before the break, you said, you know, even daily now you face those fears. So this is not a process that stops once you make the decision, you start the, you know, treatments and go through the surgery. This is something that you contend with daily. Uh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's not necessarily I don't deal with daily now my transgender identity and those aspects, but just those daily struggles of just being human <laughs> and everything yeah. that we all come into contact with at that time. So I love that. So being human, how does Ryan Salins, as a female to male transgender, define being human from his new perspective, so to speak? I uh, see, you know, being human, I think it's sometimes difficult because people may just see me as, oh, Ryan, the trans guy, you know, and that is just one very small aspect of the whole being that I am. And it's just like, I always say, look at yourself and look at all the different aspects of your life that compose who you are. You're not just a radio talk show host, you know, you're not just for someone, a husband or a brother or a sibling. There's all these different aspects of who you are. We can't just, you know, define everybody by one piece. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I love there's always synergy about what happens right around the days of the show, because I just wrote a piece yesterday for a blog where I talked about being gay is not all that defines me. I'm a dad. I'm an ex-husband. I'm a partner. I'm a radio show host. I'm a coach. I'm a marketing guy, I'm a branding guy, I'm a cyclist, I'm a spin instructor. And I think this is a piece that we can really get hung up as human beings when we suddenly put ourselves into one little place or we allow someone else to put us into that one little space. And I love that you shared that, Ryan, because you being transgender is only one aspect of who you are and always okay. happens. Yeah. So when you when you get to feeling like, you know, those are the pieces that people try to push you into Ryan, the trans guy, how do you get past that? Um, well, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to get past it because I feel like sometimes I am the person that puts me in that place uh, just because I make my livelihood and my living on being out about my identity, sharing my transition story, advocating for other people in the community, doing trainings for professionals. And so it, it really does encompass a lot of me. And that's when I start noticing that I'm putting myself in that own position, I have to take a step back and say, all right, it's time for me not to work today online and to go and strip some woodwork in the house, you know, or mow the yard or build a new piece of furniture, you know, trying to get aspects of myself uh, reawakened that I oftentimes stifle. Right. And I think that's one of the things that most of us can really learn from is, and I love how you speak about, you know, aspects of yourself to get reawakened that have been stifled. Often we get really caught up, and I know in just the conversations you and I have had, a lot of your promotion and a majority of it, you do yourself. You're very, con <laughs> you know, you are just committed to I'm the guy who goes out and makes the connections with the schools, the universities, the advocacy groups, the speaking engagements. And suddenly, if we get constantly caught up in that, there suddenly becomes what I call the no room in the room. There is no room in the room for anything else. And then suddenly that's when we do stifle. That is when we do suddenly find ourselves we need to step away. And I think this is something that, again, this show is not just about Ryan the trans guy. This is about someone who's a living, breathing human being who is experiencing life just like any of the rest of us. It just so happens 
he has transformed his physical shell to be more in alignment with who he is. So when you go out and you promote and you speak, how much of this aspect of really emphasizing that people realize this is just one little piece of who you are so that they can grasp that one little piece of who they are becomes part of your talk. I mean, how much of that is learning to separate yourself as a transgender and how healthy that can be for people? Um, well, you know, that's an area I haven't really explored in my talks completely uh, with people because right now I'm finding that we're still working so much on just helping people understand the language yeah. and the identity and working with people that are part of the community as well as people that are around them. So we're really still, and we've been here for, you know, at least the last 50 years right. in this place of really distilling, trying to ground ourselves in what does this mean? What does so transgender? let's talk a little bit about that. What, where is, you know, you and I had this conversation two days ago about where is the transgender quote movement in relation to the gay and lesbian movement? Where is it? Would you say? Uh, well, I, I would say that I feel like there's been a lot of change in the past seven years for the transgender community. A lot of positive change, a lot of more stories being out there and shared through different avenues instead of just being on daytime television with the sensationalized drama. We're getting into the more the heart of the matter and the heart of these issues and hearing parents of kids that are that are identifying as transgender, uh, people that are in relationships transitioning. We're seeing stories of transgender people that are parents themselves. And so I feel, feel like we're having more of this human piece uh, that's awakening our younger generations for sure, but people throughout uh, in the U.S. So in this awakening, what what seems to be the common age range? Is there a common age range of awakening? Is it more the younger generation? Is there an older generation that's finally coming to this? Is there like a certain age that's cropping up that says, this is who I am? Um, well, I would say that we definitely have uh, more and more younger kids coming out as trans or gender nonconforming, and that's because we have more stories out there. We now have the online networks. We now have people that are out um, mm -hmm. and talking about these issues within the smaller communities, and we have resources for parents. Not saying that there weren't resources before, but there's just more and more ways to access those resources for parents today. And so when their kids are starting to explore these issues, they're able to say, what's going on here? Ask the question, then find, find the proper support. Versus in the past, especially in the 60s and 70s, uh, when clinics were built so trying to get kids pushed into these gender conforming roles, these very traditional gender roles. We don't see that as much today. There are still some people that do it, sadly, but we have more open uh, providers as well. Right. So it was interesting. I was at a board meeting yesterday. I sit on the board of directors for a youth at risk home here in, in Riverside, California, and in the Palm Springs, Coachella Valley area. And this conversation actually came up because we – have the capability now through a program to work with higher risk kids. And we actually have three gay men, one lesbian girl. And of the three gay men, two of them are self-identifying as transgender. And what I found so powerful a was <laughs> I kind of sat there going, well, isn't this interesting? This conversation is coming up the day before I do the radio show with Ryan. <laughs> but what I found really powerful around this was the lack of programs, the lack of embracing that this is part of what we as a society need to be prepared to really deal with. And even our clinician who has 20 years of experience – in working with all levels of, you know, quote, mental illness or troubled teens and et cetera, she has brought up that all the training in the world right now is still not enough to really help us transition these teens who are dealing with these thoughts and these challenges. So what is some of the best resources out there from your perspective in this arena right now? 
Oh, there's there's so many uh, right now, depending on if you're looking at just support, if you're looking at the medical aspect, if you're looking at the political aspect. When we're looking at youth and families and parents, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Gender Spectrum out of uh, California. Also, Gender Odyssey does some work out of Seattle with families. Uh, we have TIFA, the Trans Youth Families and Allies, um, out of Colorado. So these are some of the organizations. PFLAG, Parents, Friends, and Families of Lesbians and Gays, over the past five years have really developed some wonderful resources for parents of transgender children and support for transgender people in, in general. In fact, when I came out, I gave my parents a packet, a transgender resource packet from PFLAG back in 2005. Uh, so there are definitely some national chapters there to help with that support. But when we're looking at the medical aspect, there's an organization called the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. It's called WPATH for short. Uh, These are providers from around the world. Um, Therapists, doctors, psychiatrists, uh, specialists within the different fields of medicine, all working together and developing standards of care to help providers internationally when working with both transgender youth and transgender adults. So I'm just going to say what's on my mind right now. As soon as I asked that question, Ryan, your passion began to really just explode. This is what makes you so powerful. And we've got like one minute till we go to break. But I hope whoever is listening to this sees the passion and the power that coming and stepping into yourself has really brought to you and, and enabled you to find your path to be in support and be this advocate voice and truly be of service in a way that it's a beautiful thing. And I just want to acknowledge that in you. And we're going to go to break here in just a few seconds. But when we come back, I want to talk about this piece of your life because it seems to me there must be some challenges being the voice and being the leader. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the challenges that Ryan faces as one of the leading voices in the transgender community. And we'll be right back on the Coming Out Lounge with Ryan Salins, female to male transgender who's doing powerful work. You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Get ready for resources, tools, and support to help you build a successful business and live an awesome life. It's the Women's Business Success Show with your host, founder of the Association of Women Entrepreneurs, Tara McHugh. Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central here on the Rockstar Radio Network. Each show will feature a special guest interview. Tara will bring you highly successful entrepreneurs sharing their stories of success. You'll hear about the challenges they faced along their journey together with the advice they have to help you achieve more. You'll also hear from various personal and business development experts sharing tips, solutions, and strategies that you can easily implement into your business and life for amazing results. For more on Tara and her show, check out her website, aofwe.com. Then join us for the Women's Business Success Show with your host, the founder of the Association of Women Entrepreneurs, Tara McHugh. Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central here on the Rockstar Radio Network. Wondering how to market, where to invest, where to advertise, where to find the right advice, or what to do about taxes? Doing business today is a complex venture, and that's where All Biz Talk comes in. All Biz Talk helps businesses and individuals find the right path to their success and learn more about the ideas, products, and services used by today's top professionals. Success leaves clues, so if you want to be successful, it's always best to listen to the people who have already been where you want to be. Our hosts are unbiased and will ask the hard questions, taking your calls to help connect you with the right professionals, people who can help you get a better handle on your personal and business choices. All Biz Talk is not a financial services company and does not offer any financial advice, but we will help you make the right choice when it comes to planning your financial future. Join All Biz Talk Tuesday afternoons at 1 Pacific, 3 Central at allbiztalk.com. Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. 
And we are back on the Coming Out Lounge with my guest, Ryan Salins. And before we jump forward, and I want to talk about his book, The Second Son, a little bit. But I also want to give you kind of a preview of what week three, as we march forward towards National Coming Out Day, what week three show will look like next week. I'm bringing on a great friend of mine who happened to be my sales coach. And you're probably going, okay, why is Rick bringing a sales coach onto the show? Her name is Julie Steelman, and she is a powerful, heart-centered individual who has discovered the secrets and developed a really powerful way of selling. And her book is called The Effortless Yes. And we're going to talk about how to deliver yourself into the world and accept yourself in the world as a gay, lesbian, transgender in an effortless yes sort of way. And that's really all I want to share with you. And I hope you'll tune in because this is going to be a really interesting show, how we take some principles of selling and turn them around into selling and accepting yourself as a gay, lesbian, transgender, and also how you begin to sell yourself out into the world. So that's coming up next week, week three, uh, as we march towards National Coming Out Day. All right, so back to Ryan. Um, He is definitely a leader, one of the people that gets on a lot of stages at universities, colleges across the country, not just universities and colleges, but he has become recognized through media on several shows. In fact, you've got a, a talk show coming up in just a few weeks, correct, Ryan, that you're debuting on with the New York City, I want to say is what you told me? Yeah, so NBC has introduced a new TV personality uh, to the U.S. She's known in the U.K. and Australia. Her name is Trisha Goddard. And so they're introducing her show, which I believe it premiered September 17th. And it depends on which uh, channels picked up her show for syndication. But it's called Trisha. And our show supposedly is supposed to air on October 8th on NBC. Um, and she interviewed four trans men on, mm-hmm. on the show. So... Hopefully that, it's good. That in and of itself had to be an experience because I would assume that each of you in your own right has such a unique experience as you go through this trans process. Yeah, yeah everybody's transition. I mean, there's a lot of similarities for some people in the trans community with their transition story, whether you're a trans man or a trans woman, but each story is very individual. And the support systems that you have in place, where you've come from in the past, when you had your awareness, um, this is a very individual and unique story. Right. So as one of those advocates in this arena and in this community, I just get the gut feeling that at times this has got to be a really heavy load that you carry on your shoulders. It can be difficult. Uh, you know, I am one of many many amazing leaders and voices in the community. Um, and I can, I, what I've seen is that lots of times when you become more prominently known or when you really start making advancements within a certain area, your little niche for supporting the trans community, people may turn their backs on you. Or people, there's jealousy or envy that's involved that then gets uh, uh, communicated with nasty words towards you. Uh, some maybe hate speech on your online uh, websites and things like that. So it can be very tiring, especially because for me, I'm not doing this for the money because I really don't make very much money at all. That's not what it's about. It's just about the passion. And I've always been the person where I need to do a career where I have that passion every day. It's not about the bank account. It's about changing lives. Wow. And so I want to make, I just want to comment on that statement that, you want to do a career that you're passionate about and that changes lives because I work with a lot of people who they're stuck. And this is one of those pieces that I often get into with the career piece. You can go, anybody can have a career, anybody can have a job, but the people who tend to be richly blessed with a career that isn't a job are the people who are living their passion. And Sometimes it isn't about the money. In fact, in a lot of cases, I would say people who are truly passionately living and breathing what they're doing, the money just happens to come along the way. So I'm so glad you brought that piece up because there is a difference between doing a career and living your passion, and it's huge. So so a couple of weeks ago, I had a drag performer on the show, and he 
slash she brought up something somewhat similar to what you just said, that at times they're not taken seriously in our community, the gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual community, because they're seen as campy drag performers. But in reality, at the deepest heart of who they are, this is another piece of them that is really who they, at the core, are. And I know I just repeated that, but it's so important. And they do get bashed. I mean, they get bashed for being the campy, hilarious, funny people and I'm just curious if that's kind of similar at times being in the role that you're in that within our own community, do you experience this kind of, I guess, bashing or, you know, not being taken seriously? I don't know if it's that I'm not being taken seriously. I just think that some people uh, within the LGBT community as a whole, either they don't understand a trans identity or they're fearful of trans identities and what they mean. And so then their fears get projected out towards me. Uh, within the trans community of, uh, itself, there may be, I know that some people get frustrated because I am not radical. You know, I don't fit on the fringe. I'm your typical Midwestern guy. And so I don't represent that radical fringe. And so people get frustrated that I'm kind of showing more of this mainstream be you know, typical guy type appearance versus the the uh, other aspects there. So I think that, you know, you just get a lot of people's stuff. And it's really not even about me. And that's what I need to remember. When when hurtful things are said or criticisms are made, it's not about me. It's just their own stuff. And I'm the easy target for it to be lashed out at. So this really aligns with something I say to clients all the time. What, what, you, what someone says is all about them. What you hear is all about you. And I think you just demonstrated it really beautifully. And when someone does lash out, it is coming from a point of fear. It's their own fear about something. And whether it's about being gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or being Democrats or Republican, whatever it is, there's some fear that comes up. And I know from conversations you and I have had, you know, this fear that comes forward can come from a place of what's going to happen. And quite honestly, and I don't want to turn this into a huge political discussion, but I know top of mind for you, at least, and I would feel in the transgender community this coming election could change a lot of things. This election's huge. You know, I am very open and a very proud supporter of, of President Obama. Uh, what his administration has done in the uh, last uh, four years federally for the transgender community is more than any other um, president or government person has done for the community. In just four years, it's really been groundbreaking for us. Uh, I know there's some people that have complaints or saying that he hasn't done enough, but change takes time. Right. Uh, anytime we look at politics, nothing's going to be instantly better within four years. It's going to take time. Even within eight years, we may not see all the improvements that can have, you know, have. We had to get out of this quick set, quick change mentality because that's just not the way it works. Right. So what would be one of the things that you think could set the trans community back if Obama was not reelected? I think that lots of times, because we cannot fix the economy and because we can't show those quick numbers of change, uh, politicians tend to focus on what they see as the social issues, hot topics. And right. the trans community is one of those hot topics. And so they can say, well, yeah, we can't change the economy, but listen, we'll just, we'll take, take this out so that gender identity isn't part of a non-discrimination act anymore. Uh, or we're going to say that any of these other rulings that are supporting trans people, we're just going to take those out. See, we're doing something for you. We're not letting these people have this access. Right. Uh, so we just become kind of the scapegoats or, or the, you know, their little horse and pony show. Right. Since they don't have anything else to show. Well, it kind of becomes the, the you know, ace in the deck of cards. Okay, well, we can't do this, but let's pull this ace out because this will get people rallied up or get them riled up, depending on which way you look at it. And right. now we have something to really talk about. So I just, I think this is a very important piece that you brought forward because 
this is where we can see this bigger global picture that there's everybody's got an issue. Everybody's got something they want to have part of this political environment we sit in. But sometimes we don't know unless we share these things. And that's part of the reason I wanted to bring this part of our discussion up on the show today is if people don't know that certain things could happen, sure, gay marriage is out there like a big flag out there. Everybody can see it. But I can be really honest in saying I didn't know until you shared with me some of the stuff around the trans community what this election could really mean for you guys. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just really important that we continue to share these sort of things. So we're going to go to break in a couple of minutes. What is one thing that you would really like to see the political arena not let go of as we go into this election? I think I really don't want them to let go of moving forward the Employment Non-Discrimination Act called ENDA. Uh, this has been up for being passed since 1979. And with this Employment Non-Discrimination Act, that would uh, include then in our non-discrimination policies federally uh, sexual orientation and gender identity. It's time that this moves forward. It's been held out for too long, and it's it needs to be put into our into our um, non-discrimination policies. Okay, so I want you to repeat it just so listeners know. What is the act again? It's called the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, okay. ENDA, E-N-D-A. E-N-D-A. Okay, and I think this is where it becomes just really one of those pieces of the more we talk about it, and that's why I had you repeat it, is then people become aware. I don't know if we'll have, you know, 20 people download the podcast after the show or we'll have my typical four to 500. But this is the pieces of stuff that the more we get it out there, and I love what you're doing, Ryan, and we've got like a minute before we go to break. But these little pieces, it's about awareness, whether it's gay marriage or whether it's about a woman's right to, you know, take care of their own body in the way they see fit or whether it's about, you know, ensuring that there's no discrimination with any policies towards gender orientation or sexuality or any of this stuff. These are the moments in time, folks, where each one of us gets to stand at choice. And I'm not on my political bandwagon here because I think there's issues on both sides of the fence. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about this, and then we'll tune into some of the stuff that Ryan has coming up as he progresses into this. You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with coming out coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Join us for self aid success stories with Helen Wu. Wednesday nights at 10, 9 central on Toginet.com. Helen Wu was born and raised in San Francisco's Chinatown. And after a very difficult upbringing, fighting depression, abuse, and addictions, she finally finds herself genuinely happy inside and out. Helen believes in taking our positive thinking and doing something positive to achieve a positive outcome. She's here to make a positive difference in your life, to be your game changer, your aha moment mentor. She's ready to help both men and women get into a better place. Helen Wu is also the author of Self-Aid Success Stories, 25 Success Stories from Successful Entrepreneurs. Inspired by Ellen DeGeneres, Helen wants the world to know that just because we find ourselves in a difficult situation doesn't mean we have to stay there. We can aid ourselves to a better life. So join us for Self-Aid Success Stories with Helen Wu. Wednesday nights at 10, 9 central on Toginet.com. Are you happy with your life? Satisfied with the direction you're taking? More importantly, are you content with the results you're seeing? Then Success Profiles Radio is the program for you. Join host Brian K. Wright as he talks to experts in many areas relating to life success, including expertise in leadership, business, relationships, careers, networking, health, overcoming adversity, and much more. Each week, we'll explore different aspects of success and how to apply them to your life. For more on Brian and the show, check out his website, briankwright.com. Each week is a dose of inspiration. So many people live their lives wanting more than they currently have. Success Profiles Radio is a show that will clearly demonstrate the principle, if I can do it, you can do it. So don't miss this opportunity to take control of your life and your results. Success Profiles Radio with Brian K. Wright. Mondays at 5 p.m. Central on the Rockstar Radio Network. Wow. 
Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. All right, we are going into the last segment of the show for this week, talking with my good friend Ryan Salins about his transition from female to male. And we just came off of the subject of, you know, policies and stuff in the political arena. And I think it's so important that, again, we really honor what's going on, whether you're Republican, Democrat, whatever it is that you want, that we really support in any way that we can, the policies and stuff that are coming forward during this election year, at least here in the U.S. So I want to switch gears a little bit because I talked about it at the beginning, but I really want from a heartfelt perspective, because I think sometimes hearing it from, quote, the horse's mouth themselves really is the best way to understand what somebody's intentions and the reasons that they wrote a book. So it's all yours, Ryan. This is your time. Talk about your book. Okay. Well, the book title, again, is Second Son, Transitioning Towards My Destiny, Love, and Life. And it's titled Second Son because if I were born a sign male, I would have been the second son in the family because I have an older brother. And the reason I chose to write it was not just because I wanted to write a book. Um, one of my master's degrees is in creative writing. So writing has always been a very core part of me. Uh, but I got away from it when I uh, realized that I was transgender and I was starting my transition because my life was really just absorbed. That, that was all I was focusing on that time was that transition process. And through that time and with my transitioning and the opportunities I had appearing on Larry King Live a couple times, being in the documentary Gender Rebel on the Logo channel, doing these different things, that led me into working more closely with universities nationwide on transgender issues, including sharing my transition story. And so over the past seven and a half years, I've been doing this, and I realized that I thought, you know, it'd be really great if I could also put this story, my story, and experiences into a book form because there's only so much I can do in a talk. There's only so much I can convey. And when I write, I like to write in a very simple way and an easy way for a reader to sit down and feel like they're right there alongside me. I feel like in a way they're watching a movie and they're watching it all just come into fruition. And I thought that would be a great way to just help people understand more what it feels like when who you were said to be or who, how you were assigned and the expectations that came from that being assigned female, what it feels like when that's not who you are and you're going against everything that you knew. And I also wanted people to uh, be able to explore themselves and what things in their life go against what they've been assigned or told they were supposed to be. And I think that I successfully have done that. Uh, I have wonderful reviews. This book is speaking not just to people in the trans community. Uh, it's speaking to parents. It's speaking to professionals. It's speaking to just people curious about different stories and lives. Uh, and I, I feel pretty proud to have that out now. Well, and I think you should. And I love this piece that you just brought up about how it reaches and challenges anyone to look at their own life and find the peace that they're not living authentically who they are, which is the core of my coaching. I mean, even though I'm known as the coming out coach, Mm -hmm. what I've learned about myself through this process, and and again, even your book as I've read it, and I'm almost completely finished, but it has challenged me to look out what pieces of me am I not allowing myself to be, and it began to stir up this piece of me that opened up my practice to stepping out beyond the bounds of just coming out. And I've always had clients outside of the gay lesbian community, but it really helped me see that there's this piece of Rick that now has this ability to be life coach Rick as a secondary brand, or maybe it's the primary, who knows? I'm just a coach. That's what I am. I'm a coach, but it allowed me to really go, I want to work with people who are ready to let their inner rebel come forward in a beautiful Mm -hmm. way. And I think what you just shared is part of that piece. It is that piece of what are you not allowing to come forward that if you did allow to come forward, whether you go through a major transition like you did and completely physically, you know, change your body or you allow yourself to say, I'm sick of being in this dead end job. Mm hmm do something about it. It is about that authentic living and really accepting this is what you're destined for. So speaking of acceptance, I really want to make sure we touch on this point. 
there's got to be lots of different layers of inner and outer acceptance that as a transgender you navigate. So give us some, you know, feeling of what that acceptance piece really looks like. Well, I think that something I've noticed, especially when someone first starts transitioning, is there's so much fear that you're not going to, and I'm using air quotes and you can't see it, pass, right? There's so much fear that you're not going to pass uh, that you're try- you try to be someone you're not. You try to fit in. Uh, you try to act or talk or dress in a way that you think people are going to be more acceptable of. And I think it's, you know, that's a natural part of your identity development and getting used to who you are, but it's really important to let go of that and just be yourself. And if you feel, if you're one of those people, if you're someone that says, you know what, I I do identify as transgender, but I really don't want any surgery. I don't need that. I don't feel this dysphoria with my body. That's okay. You don't have to. There's not this X, Y, Z process to transitioning. There's not this set in stone definition that you need to have to identify as transgender. You just need to be yourself and honor who you are. Well, and this is a piece that, again, gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, straight, you gain so much more through your own acceptance of being just who you are that when you begin to master that, and I'm not saying that any of us ever will. I mean, you've shared, you know, you're at the beginning of the show, your own challenges with just being human. Right. I think this is the piece of the being human that we kind of now have come full circle in, you know, an hour long show. Uh, being human is about accepting self and honoring self. And in those moments of finally mastering to the best of our capabilities, that acceptance, it gives us the breath of fresh air to begin to reach out and honor and accept others as who they are. We may not agree on politics. We may not agree on quote, and I'm doing the air quotes right now, and I felt you do the air quotes. I'm like, okay, he's doing the finger thing now. But (laughs) it's probably our inner connection that we share in our community. But it's one of those things that when you get to that space, it gives room for honoring and acceptance of others, but you can't do it until you honor and accept yourself. And I know that sounds coachy. I know that sounds psychotherapy, but I'm quite sure you've heard that numerous times as you work through this transition piece. Yeah. And, um, it's amazing how much you open up yourself and how much that opens you up to other people when you do this. You know, being, again, a kid born and raised in a small town in Nebraska and still having my home base in Nebraska, even though I travel quite a bit now, it's just, it's introduced me to so much. I've experienced so much. You know, one of my degrees is in anthropology, so I have this cultural aspect and appreciation for different cultures and beliefs and values. But this is beyond. This has opened up my life to just really appreciating what life is about. And it's really, it's not about how much money you make. It's not about the car you drive. It's not about the home you live in. It's about the connections you make with other people, the friendships that you have, and the way that you've influenced lives. Mm. That's that's just a beautiful way to kind of start winding down the show is that this piece is about how you influence lives. And I think sometimes those of us who are challenged with coming out of the closet, whether gay, straight, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, however you do this, this is a piece that we don't realize, even those that don't accept us, we have challenged and changed a life. Because in that non-acceptance of us, whether we're not accepted in our own community or we're not accepted by society, we've had an influence and caused them to take a pause and go, what does this really mean to me? They may never, ever accept, but at least we had enough influence to cause them to stop and take pause. And I think that's at the core kind of what you bring forward in so many ways when you know you share what you share. So if you could truly put something out there that you've always wanted someone to hear, what would Ryan Salen say? I would say it's really important to sit 
in the sadness that you have in life and to sit in that fear. So often when we feel sad or we feel, fear, fear, uh, feel fearful, we run away. We need to sit in that because that is where we start to grow. That is where we start to really explore those deep feelings that we've pushed so far down that we're not able to bring them up when we're happy or when we're on the go. We need to just take a pause and take those moments in the darkness. Absolutely. And I love the moments in the darkness piece because that's exactly when we usually run. We run from the darkness because we don't want to face it. And so then we never exercise. And one of my terms that I use in my practice a lot is until we exercise the muscle, until we exercise the muscle of fear, until we exercise the muscle of confronting darkness, until we exercise the muscle of doing something that we've never done before, until we exercise that muscle of taking a risk, then we'll never learn how to master that. So we've got two minutes left here, Ryan. Is there anything, why don't you share a little bit of some of the stuff you got coming up? I know we've got just two minutes, but I know you've got quite a rigorous schedule coming up this fall. So give us a little insight to that as well. Well, I always love the fall and the spring because universities are in full swing, and that's when I get to do the majority of my speaking. Uh, so I'm going to be going to several different universities over the next five weeks to do talks either on LGBT social justice issues, uh, talks on my own transition. I do transgender inclusion trainings for universities to help them in looking at their infrastructure and how they can support the trans community. So I have all that coming up. I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm also excited by doing more book readings at different bookstores from Second Son, which people yeah. can learn more about Second Son by secondsonmemoir.com. It's also right. available on Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Nook, Kindle, uh, and other stores as well. I always right. say go check out your independent bookstores first. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so. Well, Ryan, I want to just say thank you so much for coming and sharing. We're going to be signing off here in just a few seconds. In fact, in about 30 seconds, we're going to go. But thank you, my friend, thank for being you. here, sharing yourself. And if you need to connect with Ryan, it's ryansalons.com. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. So I would love to see people just flood his site and buy the book. You will learn something no matter where you stand on this issue. And as always, thanks for listening to the Coming Out Lounge. I'm Coming Out Coach Rick. Go out, step out, step up, and step into living every moment of your life in your truth the best way you can. Have a great week, and we will see you next week on the Coming Out Lounge. Thank you for joining us today with the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clements. Make sure you tune in with us next week, same time, same place, for the Coming Out Lounge.